Hi there, we're back with another episode of Singled Out. We've changed up our setting a little bit, but I think it's for the better. And today we are going over the McLaren P1, as you can see right there. Um, it is the no, it is the third of our really, truly hypercar vehicles for this week. Um, the BMW i8 and the Acura NSX are still hybrid supercars, but these three are at a different level, right? We all know that, and after the specs that we've been going over with the other two cars, we can see that they're a bit ahead of everyone on the hybrid game until we get to things like uh, uh, if Lamborghini decides to bring out their hybrid and stuff like that. But for now, these are kind of the, the three kings, right? So we're finishing off with the McLaren P1. Uh, it comes in at 903 horsepower and 730, uh, 732 torque. So both very good and only weighs... 3,000 pounds, uh, 3,057, which is, it's like right in the middle between the two, uh, makes more horsepower than the Porsche, but makes less than the Ferrari, makes more torque than the Ferrari, but less than the Porsche, um, and it comes with a 3.8, 3.8 liter V8, uh, twin turbocharged, and it has an electric motor, only one to help drive the rear wheels, and, uh, Something very cool about this car that the other ones um, don't have because they don't have turbos and turbo lag. If you drive around the McLaren P1 normally, uh, in its normal settings, then the motor will act as a buffer for turbo lag. So it'll kick in in the times when you put your foot on the throttle and a lot of cars you have to wait. Um, I mean, it's getting better and better and better every year that turbo vehicles come out. But with big turbos, you have lag because they have to spool up. So the motor takes in that gap so you step on the throttle turbos start to spool up the electric motor is acting as the turbos essentially for a second until they kick on and then you're out like a rocket but you don't have to wait for that power you can just stomp it and go so that's a really cool thing that they do uh but like the porsche this is a plug-in hybrid with an electric range of 19 miles uh, so not good better than the porsche better than 12 miles but like 19 that's not good uh interesting fact about the mclaren p1 is it's more of an exclusive car as it only had a production of 375 versus the ferraris um it was like 700 and then the porsche's 918 so it is a bit more of an exclusive vehicle there are less around um but you can see by looking at the curves and stuff it does look uh it has the best looks out of the three, but McLaren, McLarens do look very good. I do have a bit of an issue with the nostrils, but it has one of the coolest things a super car can have, and that is active aero. That wing will move uh, for braking purposes and things like that, which is always cool. And like a Lamborghini, it's got vertical doors, but it's a bit different because they fold out versus just up. Um, that's still always a nice feature. And they're not as impractical as most people think. I mean, if you oh, they always go, oh, how are you going to get out? They actually, they do a good job of not coming too far out of the body. Uh, they come about as far as you opening your door. So it's not as bad. Um, but without the hybrid motor, it only makes 727 horsepower and then 600-ish uh, torque. It makes about 100 less torque. So it still does very good even without the hybrid motor but that hybrid motor does add a little less than 200 horsepower, which is a lot. And so it is good that it is at that level, but it is on par with the other three. And what's interesting about these three vehicles is they all came out about the same time. Production for all of them started in 2013 and they were being delivered around that time and production ended for most of them around 2015. Sorry about that. Uh, and just like the other two, it comes with a seven speed dual clutch. And I still wonder if 7 is as good as they can go. I do wonder if um, there will ever be an 8-speed dual clutch or a 10-speed dual clutch or if there's something restricting that. Uh, if anyone knows, that'd be a very interesting thing to a, uh, see about. Um, but it does have a carbon chassis as well, so that is very, very good for it. Um, McLarens have something that's a little bit interesting. They have a very tub like shape and you always hear about the supercars that you sit in the tub blah blah um but the the threshold area so when you close the door that part that you can't see when the door is closed is very large it's about this big on a mclaren p1 like you have to get over a lot to be able to sit in the car 
So, I mean, not that most people are going to be looking for McLaren P1 as their next used vehicle, since you can only find them used at this point. And, I mean, we're using the term used very loosely. I doubt one has... I doubt there's a P1 with over 10,000 miles. I doubt there's many with over 1,000 miles. So, it is a shame that those vehicles don't get treated the way that a car should, but what can you do? The people that actually want to die actually want to own them can't afford them and the people that can't afford them don't drive them because they have so many other supercars so that will always be a sad fact about these vehicles you can never really learn about reliability with them because they don't they don't last that long and by last that long not like they mechan mechanically fail they just they're never taken to that level before they're so expensive that they're just put on a shelf and just kept forever um but uh, it does have a 0 to 60 speed of 2.8 seconds, which is slower than both of the other cars. But uh, in a racetrack, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name, but it was the fastest between the two. Uh, don't know about Nürburgring times, but we'll go over that in patch notes, which will be uh, when we go maybe a bit more in-depth with it. Um, and just like the Ferrari, it is rear-wheel drive, so it does... The Ferrari is definitely a very good competitor. It's a bit more apples to apples than the Porsche, being all-wheel drive and things like that, but mm, what can you do? Um, so, it also does have, as you can see, uh, slotted carbon ceramics and things like that. Um, so that's really good. And just like the other hybrid, uh, hybrid cars, a bit more than the Ferrari, so like the Porsche, uh, it does have a regular range of 375 miles of uh before the gasoline is empty when you're using both hybrid and gasoline so that is the far was or sorry the porsche was at 400 which is really good and that's crazy that you can get that amount of fuel economy out of that level of performance vehicle performance vehicle of course that's not driving it hard wherever you go i imagine if you drive it like a race car it'll probably be done in a, a bit more than less than half the time i mean the the Veyron can empty its tank in like a couple minutes and things like that. So when these cars are driven at their hardest, that range really gets small. Uh, it is also, maybe like I mentioned earlier, don't know if I did, it is plug-in, uh, just like the Porsche, but not the Ferrari. Um, takes about two hours to charge, so way faster than the Porsche. The Porsche took seven hours, so you had to make sure like plug it in every night kind of thing if you were going to use it and use the electric batteries. This only two hours, and it does also charge itself off its uh, engine and everything just like any other hybrid. Uh, so I like the P1. I like its looks. I don't care about the nostrils on the front, but like most McLarens, they are very stylish. They're, they're very slippery. They are very easy to drive through air, air passes right through them with all their curves and flowy lines and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I like it a lot. Um, I still think the LaFerrari comes in as my favorite. Uh, maybe just because they're always red. I don't know. I do, I do, I do like that one. And, I, and I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the V12. Anything over eight cylinders is good in my book. So, And again, this has a tiny v8 3.8 liter that's that's a small v8 that's a big that's a pretty big v6 but that is a tiny v8 we don't have many of those ever so going on mclaren for being original uh but that's where i'll round it up today um tell me uh please let me know if you like the new setup i think i do uh, don't have to worry about uh, other cars or anything like that. I can maybe focus a bit more on what I'm talking about than driving. Uh, but, you know, let me know. So, as always, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, comment any kind of vehicles you'd like to learn about. Any detailing things you'd like to know about. Obviously, we have detailing stuff. So, if anyone has only ever watched Singled Out, we do detail cars pretty heavily. Um, and I think that'll do it for today. So... Yeah, uh, just to repeat myself again, like any other YouTuber, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.